Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to Agency Journey. I'm your host Kuba Greitzar and with me on the call today is Kurt Schmidt, agency founder, podcast host and author, agency coach with 25 years of experience in the agency world, author of The Little Book of Networking and a few more things besides that we might learn about on this episode. Kurt, how are you feeling today? I'm doing so great. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat with you today. My pleasure, Kurt. And I can't wait. It's like I'm dealing with a with a curse of abundance in your case. You know, we just chatted about what we could steer into in this episode. And let's find out where we end up going, so to speak. So first of all, um, here's, you know, we're both podcast hosts. You know that a good uh, <laughs> icebreaker question is uh, is key. Let me try and hit you with my favorite icebreaker question yeah. of late. Not super complicated, but what is the most fun thing you've done this year? Oh, this year. Yeah. Uh, well, so um, so recently my wife and, uh, and I bought some uh, raw land um, up on the North Shore of Lake Superior in the middle wow. of the U.S. here. And I would say the most fun I've had is up there clearing trails with uh, and using heavy equipment and chainsaws and axes and all sorts of things uh just being outdoors and uh we this raw land like we it has no power going to it no water going to it um so we're 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 off the grid and it's just been i would say going up there this year has just been my favorite thing you know you're really checked out from the you know the internet and digital world yeah, that's so interesting. You know, it, it seems like a, a lot of actually hard physical work, but I can totally relate. And, you know, unplugging and getting to do something like that would be fun. Yeah. You would also be my two year old's very favorite person right now. He's so into like all of that sort of equipment, chainsaws, lawnmowers, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's 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 uh, it's uh, it's big boys' toys is what it is. <laughs> exactly. And he is a small boy, but he likes the big toys already. He's got a whole catalog. Yep. You know, it's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> that puts such a big smile on my face already. Thank you for that. Okay. Icebreaker successful. Tick. Uh, next up, Kurt. Can you tell the watchers and listeners of the show a little bit more about you, your background, your sure. experience for the people who are not familiar? Yeah, sure. So I started out my career as a designer and developer, um, and I worked for a very large insurance company early on in my career and realized that um, I wasn't really meant to join the Navy. I was always meant to be a pirate. So I, I moved to a small agency very quickly and mm. um, and uh, really enjoyed the atmosphere there and helped to grow that agency from about five to 30 people in a few years. And then I moved to another agency that was just under about 50 people. And we grew that to about almost 600 people in about six years. And then uh, from there, I went and started my own agency, which was a, a UX, UI design and development, um, full stack sort of agency. And we grew that, we doubled in size every year. And, uh, and now, right now, that agency that I'm still an owner of um, we just focus on design, just user experience and UX and UI. And along that journey, uh, I've been doing a lot of book writing. I've been doing the podcast. I've just been putting myself out there more because of what I've found is, is that the more that I put myself out there, um, the more opportunities I have to learn. And so um, I'm kind of addicted to it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. not interested in being internet famous or anything like that. But what I found is doing the podcast and doing the books um, has just been such great learning experiences for me. Uh, and that's how I, that's how I've always learned is best is through experience versus, um, school or books. You know, I was never very good in school. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Wow. That, that is quite a journey that you're uh, telling us about here. So I've got some questions about that lined up definitely, but my traditional thing is to ask you the question that everybody gets from the get-go at a, uh, on Agency Journey. So I'm not going to break with tradition now. Before we jump into anything else, what is your number one tip for agency operators? Ooh, right now, I would say that over the last 18 months, a lot of agencies have struggled with new business development. It's been, uh, it's been an mm -hmm. issue for a lot of folks. And I have one, one immediate hack that can help you get some revenue starting right away. So 
Um, the thing is, is that um, if you need money and you need revenue very quickly, the best way to get it is through people who have already given you money. <laughs> so mm. current clients and past clients. And the best way to get that revenue up is to go back and mine those clients for more work. Because I promise you, I guarantee you, 90% of those clients do not know the full offerings that you provide. They, they sure, you, in the first meeting, you went through a capabilities thing, you went through a deck, you explained everything, but they all they heard was that one thing that you were going to solve a problem for, which was build a website or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't know you do SEO and paid search and these other things, or or they came to you specifically for paid search, but they don't know that you refactor and redesign websites and workflows and things, even though it's all over your website. Like your client isn't going back to your website after they've hired you. What reason would they have to go back to it and learn more about you, right? So right. Um, my tip is, is that make sure you're, you, you have an initiative in your agency, uh, a re-education initiative with clients in, in progress, and um, and past clients, and you're running this initiative at least once a year to make sure that people are up to speed on the service offerings you provide. That sounds awesome, and I would love to stay here for a second. Seems yeah. like there's you know a ton of merit to that kind of strategy, but the question, as with anything, is you know in the how. So you know, imagine mm -hmm. that okay, an agency founder is, is listening to this, an agency owner, and they're thinking, okay, that's some, that sounds like something we should totally do. How would you steer them in the direction of what's the first step? Yeah, what first step? So first step is obviously do a audit of all the clients um, that you that you're currently working with. Put them in a mm -hmm. list in a spreadsheet. Make another tab and put all the clients you've worked with in the past. I don't care what capacity. I don't care if they paid you five dollars or five million dollars. Mm -hmm. Put them. Put their names in that list, and then uh, go through and determine um, which of these companies are in a growth stage, right? And that's what we'll prioritize them by. So, how do we find out if they're in a growth stage? Well, you could start by going to their careers pages. Are they hiring? Um, if they're not hiring, they're probably not in a growth stage. So I'd move them a little further down. And then mm -hmm. what I would do is I would create a very specific uh, deck um, or pr a presentation for your salesperson or for yourself, if you're the salesperson and you're the owner, um, uh, that you are contacting these people and saying, hey, um, as part of being one of our clients, um, we do this uh, capabilities check-in annually every year. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned that during our for initial sales call. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, yeah, we do that once a year. Uh, and so I'd love to just get um, 15 minutes of your time because I want to walk you through some recent work and some recent projects um, that we've done. Um, and then also ask you a couple of questions about how your current work is going and uh, and uh, and or how you how our work was for you in the in the past. And mm -hmm. most people will totally agree to it because you, you just tell them it's like 15 minutes, but schedule 30 because they'll chat. Um, okay. And then you go through the deck and you're just like, here's some recent problems we've solved. You don't do just your typical case studies. Like here's an app, right? You've uh -huh. got to go through and you've got to change the narrative to, well, this company was losing money and we did a thing that helped them make money. And, and if that thing was an app, great. If it was a website, great. It doesn't what doesn't matter is the the executable or the deliverable. What matters is the story about how you transformed a business, how you helped them, what the problem is you solved. Because mm -hmm. then what people will do is say, oh, I have that problem too. Um, or I have a problem like that. Or I know somebody who has a problem like that. And, mm -hmm. and they will identify and attach themselves more and more to it. So where agencies are making the biggest mistakes these days, they're just focusing on case studies that show off work, like their portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what clients are looking for these days. They're looking for places that solve problems for them. And so what they want to see is, hey, this person had this problem and um, I have that problem. I should contact these these people. Okay. So we've got to be much more intentional with that. And so a great way to test that is with current clients because it's a way safer place to do it, right? Um, mm -hmm. They already kind of like you. They're already giving you money. You're not going to lose them if if you show them something that they're like, oh, that isn't for me. So right. it's a great testing ground for things as well. Okay. Yeah, that sounds very relevant. 
And it's interesting, this is the second time today I'm hearing about this, let's call it a, a problems first approach, you know? The previous mm -hmm. time was more oriented towards content, but even there, I think there was Jay Klaus, uh, he runs a podcast too, that was talking about, you know, I like Jay Klaus. I like, I follow him. Yeah. 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 He, he's doing good work. So he's talking about building a problems database based on input from his audience, you know, and then 100%. positioning his content yep. yeah, towards these problems. Seems like it works further down the funnel too, huh? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It works with our clients all the time. So for example, um, you know, I would go, um, instead of when I meet with a new client, instead of just saying like, oh, we do work with this big company, this big company, this big company, like I would do 10 years ago. And that would that would work 10 years ago, right? Because they'd be like, oh, I want to be like those big companies. So I, I'll hire you because you seem like you know what you're doing. People mm -hmm. don't care anymore. Um, social media and things have really um, flat, flattened um, sort of the barrier to entry. So so the, the idea is, is that what they want is, I know you can solve this problem for me. You've solved it before, right? So we used mm -hmm. to have clients that come to us and say, oh, I don't, have you guys done an app like this before? And we'd be like, no, but I mean, we do tons of apps. We've done like 20, 30 apps. So, you know, your app is not that a beautiful, unique snowflake, you know? And mm -hmm. they, But to them, it is. It is a beautiful and unique snowflake to them. And if they don't see that exact app in your portfolio, they won't hire you. So how do you combat that? The only way you can combat that is saying, well, all these people had the same problem as you did. They had this unique problem that nobody else was solving. And here's how we solve unique problems. And here's an example of a unique problem and how we solved it. And presenting it that way versus saying, look, we, we've done a bunch of apps. Right, and that's right. why a lot of agencies are struggling right now, because they're following the same thing they did five, 10 years ago. Um, and just pitching work and being like, look, look at our fancy portfolio. Don't you want something fancy like this? And the people are like, no, no, what I need is I need this. I need to not be struggling with this thing anymore. And, okay. and uh, we've got to change how we're pitching our work. That, that makes a ton and a half of, of sense to me. So now yeah. thinking about this process of, you know, reaching out to your clients for this, uh, what did you call it? A capability presentation? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yep. what's, is there anything particular that happens as the kind of next step there? You know, you've invited yeah. them to the conversation, you've done the pitch tag. What happens next to try to actually secure that business? Yeah. So um, my hope is, is that during that, that call, we are asking them questions about um, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a slight way to say, have you, have you experienced any of these problems and, mm -hmm. and getting from them? Um, no, we don't have that problem. Um, but usually what people will say is, I don't have that problem, but I have this problem, right? Okay. So that's what we're doing. We're leading them down this path of letting us into what they're doing. So my hope is, is that on that call, one of the goals should be is hearing some of the problems they are currently uh, dealing with and figuring out, does my company provide those resources um, to be mm -hmm. able to help do that? Now, if your company, if, if they do say, well, it's actually, I'm having an accounting problem or something. My hope is, is that you've got a great referral network built up as part of your agency that you can send them to your accounting partner and you're getting 5% of the first years of billable work for that referral. And so our agency ended up being kind of a hub and spoke model for many years where we were, um, you know, somebody would come to us for marketing um, things and we'd be like, we don't, we don't do marketing. We don't do any of that stuff, but we have two different partners that work specifically in your industry. Um, I'd love to make an introduction to you. Um, and then we would get, you know, five to 10% of that referral fee for the first year's invoices. Um, and it was great. And so our clients kept coming back to us as a source of information, not just a mm -hmm. developer <laughs> or a designer, right. you know, and that's um, how we yeah, grew I so quickly. Yeah. Tell me more about that. That's how we grew so quickly. Th this stood out when you were doing the, you know, the intro and kind of background on yeah. you. I mean, man, this this guy's grown a lot of agencies. Seems like quite fast. And Very is fast. that the key? Being that that hub and spoke, is there more to yes, it? Like, hundred percent. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So so again, you know, in professional services, in any professional services, 
you work in. Let's uh, again, think about like lawyers or mm-hmm. something, for example, right? Um, there are many different types of lawyers. There's, there's trial lawyers, right? There's lawsuit lawyers, there's real estate lawyers, mm-hmm. there's all these things, right? But us as, as general knowledge people, like when somebody says, oh, you better get a lawyer, we just call somebody, whoever's got lawyer in their name or whatever, right? Like, right. and that lawyer might say, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I do help people like you, but I mostly help businesses. You probably want to deal with my colleague, Bill, over here, mm-hmm. who, who does this. And then guess what? The guy you called is going to get a referral fee from Bill um, because he actually does the type of lawyering. You ne- this is not a new technique, but it. But the problem is, is that um, agencies in the digital space, a lot of them were founded by people who do the work. They're not necessarily business people by trade. Um, right. A lot of them don't have your typical MBA or um, type of type of thing. Um, they they bootstrap themselves and they made it happen. Um, and with that, what can happen sometimes is you build up these sort of walls around you where you're not taking in as much information from how other people are being as successful. Um, mm-hmm. And that's something I learned early was learn from other professional service industries, not just more digital industries. Learn from lawyers, accountants. Um, all these different people, how are they growing? How do they grow their businesses? Um, they've been around a lot longer than these digital agencies have been. Um, uh, and so um, the techniques that they use are very similar to what I'm talking about. Um, and and they become kind of that hub and spoke. And so now people are showing up um, all the time with different types of questions. So let's say you more and more of your clients start showing up saying, I want SEO. Um, And you're keep referring them off to these other people. Well, at some point you're going to be like, you know what? I should put on my roadmap to uh, start offering SEO and start Mm -hmm. being known for that. And it'll also help you sort of figure out how you scale your services, which services you add on. Um, You know, it even helped uh, me early on decide on uh, what kind of um, agency to acquire, right? Because people were looking for this type of thing, right? So. Okay. Awesome. And that gives, gives me so many uh, ideas of like avenues to, to further explore here. One thing stuck with me from what you said is, um, you know, these types of agencies that were created by the doers and, and grown by the doers, you yeah. know, putting up walls. I wanted to speak to those like this kind of person listening to the podcast right now who is hearing what you're saying and thinking, oh, gosh, I should... I should do something about this, you know, open myself up a little bit, try to build a network. I mean, you published yes. a, a whole book about this, uh, the little book of networking, yeah. right? Let's talk about that for a bit then, you know, for somebody yeah. who's fairly new to this, what's the technique? What's the framework? What do you recommend as, again, step one, two, three to try sure. and get there? <laughs> well, step one, um, thank you for asking it that way. That's a really good question because um, step one is, a, is a, a different mindset about networking is what you've got to first start with. A okay. lot of people think networking, you're kind of um, taught it's a very transactional thing, um, but that's not real networking. That's not modern networking and not what I talk about in my book. You want to approach it as a, a community builder. And in, when I say that, I mean in, in all aspects. You're building a community around you or around uh, initiative or something you, you're passionate or care care about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be, you're very passionate about bringing up younger, ge- the next generation of developer or designer or something. And that's something you're very passionate about. Um, so networking with other people that are passionate about that as well and finding ways to help uh, that community and build that community. And and as you're doing that um, and you're, you're sharing with those folks about what your passions and your interests are, it's just going to be natural that you start sharing like what you're looking for and what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's the other thing. Part two to this would be, is be very intentional about why you're networking. Like tell, you know, when you meet people, um, you're like, Hey, uh, so I used to have this pitch every time I would say it dozens of times a day. Hey, my name's Kurt. I'm the president and partner at foundry. Um, we help uh, businesses with user experience design and custom software applications uh, for their business. What are you looking for? And I would just go immediately. I would just get it right out of the way. This is who I am. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I do. And then mm-hmm. move right into 
how can we start finding value together, right? And there's okay. times, yeah, you're going to run into times where people, there isn't value there. Maybe it's not there today, but maybe it's down the road, right? So mm -hmm. for example, I used to do a lot of mentorship stuff early on in my career and people would be like, why are you spending all this time with these students? Mm -hmm. okay. um, you know, isn't it annoying and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I was like, no, Stupid. number one, um, I wish I would have had access to a mentor early on and I didn't. And so I, I, I'm mm -hmm. kind of paying, paying it forward, paying it backward. I don't know, however you want to say it. The other thing is, is that these people are going to go out and get jobs. They're going to go out. Mm. Guess what? In three or four years, they might hire you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, so you, 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 uh, you better invest your time wisely in where you put it. And so to me, um, it's like investing in a startup, right? Um, is investing that time mentoring uh, a very talented youth as they're coming up in these, in these areas. At some point, somebody's going to hire them and guess who they're going to say was really a lot of help to them early on. Um, or when you go to them and say, wow, you've been, wow, you've been at Meta for a couple of years. I'd love to come in and, and meet some of the folks there that work in the innovation area. And uh, yeah, exactly. did they hire outside agencies? Oh, you know what? Let me check. And guess mm -hmm. what? They actually will check because, right. because they, um, they feel like they're part of your community now, right? Yeah. And yeah. to me, my father taught me when I was very young that a rising tide lifts all boats. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, what you want to be is that person that's helping r raise that tide um, and, and bringing that to other people. And I promise you, as you're helping other people raise their boats, your boat will get raised too. Yeah. That, <laughs> wow. You know, you're reminding me of a conversation I had a few years ago, not even on this show, on my previous one, where there was somebody who was like you big on mentorship and he mentioned it he called it the I, i'll never forget how he called the concept engineered serendipity you know yeah you they can oh, really, i love that yeah you can really build your own luck once you you know you build up enough you know call it good karma call it you know sending out positive energy into the world through these you can acts call it whatever of service. you want yeah but it, it really does does come back so it does it, and it works and it and it works because um, you, you have to, you can't continue doing it unless you're sincere. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. And so you will, and don't worry, like during the thing, you'll, you'll get, you'll get some downers because you will run into some transactional people that are just takers and trying to take stuff from you. But like, of course you're going to, you're, you know, you, you go out to ride a bike, you're going to skin your knee at some point. Like, just don't let it get you down. Just get back mm -hmm. up and keep going. Exactly. So could we talk a little bit about the tactics related to this? I'm thinking even about my own situation, you know? Yes. My career in marketing is coming up on like a decade in the space, uh, you know, close to that. And, you know, I worked for one company, another company. Now I'm here at Zen Pilot. And I'm already thinking, you know, what you're saying, ironically enough, is making me feel a little bit guilty. Um, the, you know, team members I was in contact with, or, you know, uh, previous yeah. managers, yeah. I feel like I'm behind in terms of keeping up with them, you know, as a person who yeah. leaned on this, wrote a book on it, you must have some sort of workflow or framework. Or, I know. do. And I'm glad you bring that up because that, that is really so. why I wrote the book. Cause there's lots of books on networking out there. Uh -huh. Um, and they are very focused on mindset and how to approach networking, um, as a human, but very few of them are very tactical. Mine, my book is very, has a very tactical, the whole latter half of the last third of the book is basically a system I use to run, manage my networking. And, I, and it's nothing fancy, it's it's a spreadsheet. So um, okay. what I what I do um, is that when I, when I get to meet people or individuals, um, they go into specific categories in the spreadsheet. So, um, this is a co past coworker. This is a um, this is a former boss. This is a business owner. This is a potential prospect. This is a student, and I'll have different tabs for all these different people. This, these are recruiters. These are professional service providers. Whatever the case may be, and I just have a real simple like um, it's their name, their contact information, and then what are they looking for? Um, this mm -hmm. person's looking for a job. This person's looking for clients. This person's looking for uh, a manufacturing firm that um, that can do CNC laser specific things. They can't find the right partner. And then 
Uh, there's a, I put in the date of the last time I talked with them. And then mm -hmm. next to it is a box. And that box, if it goes past 90 days, it turns red. And that's mm, it. Okay. And so uh. every day I get up and I look at my spreadsheet and I look, is there red in my ledger or not? Mm -hmm. And if there's red in my ledger, I look at it and say, all right, it's time for me just to do a quick check-in um, with Mike here. Uh, but if I look and I look and I look at it and it's red in Mike and me, the last conversation was, is he was like, you know what? I'm taking some time off. I'm going to, I'm going to go backpacking around Europe for a couple of months or something. I'll move him right. to a different tab that I call like the archive tab of like, I'll check in with him in like six months or okay. something, you know? Yeah. Um, we don't have anything active where we can help, you know, raise that tide together right now. So, but I don't want to lose them. So I'll, I'll move them to a more um, casual tab than okay. an active networking tab. And, and so what I do with those things is, is just real quick. I'll send, I'll shoot them a quick email in a reply to another email saying, Hey, uh, our last conversation, um, you know, you mentioned, you know, you were, uh, um, taking your dog in to get checked. Uh, how's, how's things over there? Like, boom. And then that's it. Yeah. You know, Oh, yeah. we should get together in the next couple of weeks. Great. Here's my Calendly link, um, which is a very specific networking link, which only allows me to have like two or three, sometimes four meetings a week. Um, mm -hmm. if it's virtual and maybe one a week, if it's in person. So, so I use the Calendly to also help me lock down. And so I don't get overwhelmed <laughs> very mm, quickly, yeah. but it's a whole system that I'm, I'm running through. And then at every single meeting I'm meeting with people, guess what I'm doing? Well, let's go back to the beginning of our conversation. I'm explaining to them how okay. I recently solved some problems for people. I'm not uh, explaining them what I'm looking for and what I'm doing. I'm explaining to them that I recently solved some, some problems for them. Um, so for example, I, I coach a lot of agencies right now. And so people know, oh, if I have an agency or a firm or an IT services or something like that, any professional service firm, I can go to Kurt and get some, get some coaching. Um, but I don't go and pitch the coaching. What I'll say is, oh, I just recently helped an agency um, decide on which project management software they should be upgrading to because they're running a three and a half million dollar business on Basecamp right now and mm -hmm. they need to upgrade. And, um, and so I helped them with that. Another one, I helped them figure out how to, um, do a uh, cold outreach on LinkedIn to be very successful and how to build authority and thought leadership. So I'll tell those stories instead yeah. of saying, oh, I helped them with operations or right. I helped them with right. sales. Yeah. Or with content or whatever. Yeah. I, I hear exactly. You. I hear so you. that networking piece is, um, the key is, is follow up because that's again, if you, if you and I don't have anything to help each other out with right now, it doesn't mean in three months we won't or in mm. three years, you know, exactly. and too many people think like you either have like people you invite to your wedding or people you used to work with and there's nothing in the middle, right? Like <laughs> it's like, no, it's all gray. Like we're yeah. professional, we're professional colleagues. So yeah. that doesn't mean I'm going to invite you to my daughter's wedding. And it also means we might not ever have a job together. But right. we work in the same space, we share similar values, and we care about the same things. Like, we should find ways to help each other. Yeah, yeah. And you never know where the overlap is going to be between somebody who might have been at your wedding dealing with a problem that you've got somebody in their yeah, professional exactly. network to, yeah, exactly. to help deal with it. Right. Uh, you know, I, I've heard of cases like this, <laughs> definitely. Yep. So a few more things come to mind, and I feel like I would like to tap you more, a little bit more in, in the networking area, uh, if we can stay here for, for a little bit. Yes, sir. So what comes to mind is, first of all, on what you said on the spreadsheet, I mean, being part of Zenpilot, I can't not mention that I'm already envisioning like a ClickUp board and, you know, automated oh, sure. subtasks to reach out to people. I feel like that. I know could... lots of people that use everything from Asana, ClickUp, and Monday, and... Um... And they, they use HubSpot and, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Notion, but, Notion's a big one, yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, and, you know, so that sounds like a video we might produce on the on the Zenpilot channel. Second, this might be, you know, going even a little bit too far, but I'm going to say it anyway, you know, think of it, if you start building that spreadsheet now, or if you have it already in place, you know, it used to be you would have to match people kind of manually, problems to solutions. Now yep. you punch that in into chat GPT and it'll find it for you, right? Boom. There I mean, you go, I, boom, right. 
I, I could see yep, you exactly. nodding even before I finished the sentence. integrate that with your spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, that is such a huge value add there. So yeah, it really yeah. opens my mind up to possibilities. So here's yeah, another thing. I love thing you're that... thinking that way because, again, that's how we get stuff done. Because everybody I, I talk to, they're like, oh, I can't go out and be networking. I've got a family. I'm too busy. Or, you know, I got to take the kids to baseball and things like that. You do have time. You do. You're just not mm. prioritizing this. And exactly. on top of that, you don't have a system that's helping you manage that. In all aspects yeah. of your work and your business, you have systems. You're using QuickBooks for your accounting. You're using Asana for your project management. You're using Notion for this. But why this thing, this thing networking, which is just as important as any one of those singular things, are you not managing with such ferocity? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I don't think it takes much time at all. You know, you've, you're no. making all of these LinkedIn connections every day, every week to just shoot them a quick message. You know, what are the problems exactly. you're dealing with? How's right things now? going? You yeah, working on yeah. anything cool? Yeah, you know, exactly. that's it. Like, hey, exactly. you work on anything cool recently? Um, <laughs> no, no, I've actually, I'm in between jobs. Oh, really? What are you looking for? Uh, well, you know, I was a marketing person at this place. Oh, you know, I just talked to a guy last week. They're looking for a marketing person. Do you want an intro? Awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and, and it can work just like that. So exactly. Look. And then people start to realize and start to look at you as like, this is a go-to person to help solve problems, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. once you then when you go out and you're providing your thought leadership around which specific problems you solve, at some point one of those things is going to click. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. there you go. Like I've had I've had multi-million dollar projects um come through in just that little tiny sequence um, that I explained to you just now. And you gave me a perfect segue to my next question, actually, because I wanted to talk about money a little bit. You mentioned earlier in the conversation that, you know, as the connector, there's a little bit of something in it for you as well. Mm -hmm. But sure. here's the hurdle that even I'm personally dealing with, with is, you know, sometimes I feel like I am delivering that value i've made the connection but how do you actually mm -hmm. open up the conversation of okay I'm, I'm glad that this worked out for you you know is there what's your approach towards actually bringing money up in this <clears throat> these my sorts approach of is, is i bring it up the i bring it up right away so mm -hmm. so if somebody says to me um you know i'm looking for this very i'm looking for the like i just i just had breakfast with a good old buddy of mine this morning and he's working at an agency and, um, and he's like, yeah, we're really looking for enterprise level ERP sort of clients and stuff. And I was like, oh, I, yeah. I run into that on occasion. Um, you know what, um, usually what I do is a finder's fee for something like that, you know, about five to 10% of the first years of invoices. Um, would, you know, would that be acceptable to you guys if I brought something in? Uh, oh, I'll go talk to the bosses and whatever. And then boom, it's done. So so, but if I, to your point, you're talking about maybe something a bit more active, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, it really depends if, if I feel like, if I feel like I'm, um, if it's one, you know, small agency to another, like a lot of times I just do them a solid and I'm like, here you, here you go. And I don't take any, anything from it, you know, buy me, take mm -hmm. me out and buy me a steak or something, you know, <laughs> like <That's laughs> maybe. Good. Uh, to, for thank you, you know, um, or I've had people like show up and just, um, you know, bring something nice, a nice present or something as a thank mm -hmm. you later. And, and that's fine, you know, um, because once you're in those sort of like, uh, you're, you, you're, you don't have any time to have those discussion, um, formally, um, it's best just to probably hand them off. Right. But after mm -hmm. you hand them off, then I would go back to them and say, you know, in the future, I'm starting a little referral program at our company. And that's how you refer to it as you, you call it, a, you know, this is a, this is a part of our policy. Okay. This okay. isn't like, um, because I want to charge you money. Mm -hmm. This is what our company is doing. And so our company's policy is that when we do these referrals and they equal over 10,000 us dollars of um, income for you that we will then retain 5% of the first year's invoices, um, from you, um, as part of that referral network or whatever. And, and you just, you, again, you go to it in a business discussion, not in a bro sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge discussion. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That that that's pretty clear. And thanks for for sharing that all, yeah, on top yeah. of it. Okay. Great. Um, is there anything else? Um, I had some additional questions, kind of not related to networking, maybe necessarily, and we'll sure. use that to kind of tie a bow on the conversation in the, in a moment. Okay. But before that, insurance question about networking. Anything I yeah. failed to ask about that is like very key to this that you know would yeah. be worth adding here. Yeah, I would say again, I want to stress the intentionality of networking, and that's where people fall down. Be very intentional when you're going out and telling people, "Hi, my name is Bob, and I am looking for this. What are mm. you looking for?" And then mm. recording that information, being intentional. Okay, this person is looking for leads for um, their uh, you know graphic design business and. Um, they're looking for specifically these types of businesses and, and you're going to make a note of it and you're going to, you're going to check out, do I have somebody in my network? That's a good, you're going to spend a little time doing that. And I do that all uh -huh. the time. Like uh, my wife and I might be watching a Netflix show at night and I've got the laptop, uh, there and I'm just doing a couple of skims through my thing. Like who should I connect to Heather this week? You know, oh, and Bill's looking for this. And then what I do is if I start to find that there's a big network around a certain type of thing is that then I start to build a, I literally build a community around it. So what I might do is say every quarter, I'm going to have a zoom call with all of you that are looking for the same thing and I'm okay. going to host it. And then we're all going to get together and talk about what are, what's working, what's not working, what's seeing, what's happening. And then we're going to share info and um, introduce ourselves to each other. So what ends up, what people end up doing is they start doing these onesie twosies things. And then all of a sudden the onesie twosie things start turning into these big, like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting so many people all the time. What you now need to do is then, then corral that certain groups into like a monthly meeting or a quarterly meeting where mm -hmm. um, now, now it's not just you and this person exchanging thing. It's you and your community, right? That we're building, right? Yeah. right? We're okay. all now getting together and helping each other out. You were just the catalyst to say, you know what? Uh, instead of us having like six meetings separately, why don't we just have one big one every quarter? Okay. And it's great. It's fantastic. And people love it. And how do these get coordinated? Is there like, I, I imagine it's not necessarily an email chain or like, what's the No, it's not. No, usually I would, I might start a Slack specifically around it or something. Okay. Um, uh, or a discord, you know, depending on how technical, you know, what their age is. Right. Cause if okay. they're, if they're over 40 <laughs> discord is not, they're like, what? Um, mm. uh, even though like me, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just over 50 and I use discord all the time. So, um, okay. I, uh, I, I'll sometimes start a channel around those things, but sometimes it's just, I put a reoccurring meeting every third Tuesday of the third month, every three months, mm -hmm. you know, and, if people show, they show. If they don't, they don't. Like, okay. no big deal, you know? But again, if they follow up with me a month later and like, oh, man, I'm sorry I missed that meeting. Oh, that's great. Well, another one's coming in a month. So show up for that one. Yeah, and there's a predictable rhythm. People get used to that. I can see how that would and it's, work out. It's predictable for you. You can manage your time better. Plus, mm, exactly. it'll allow you to manage different sorts of avenues you might be interested in, right? So you might not just be interested in the marketing aspect. You might want a uh, accounting or business focused kind of mentorship. And these are like little masterminds. Do you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. You're not building a presentation and doing all that crap. It's not a webinar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, gotcha. it's people exchanging things. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's like they're opening up a market of I've got this. Anybody willing to take anybody willing to. I can see that uh, working out. Okay. Yeah. So Kurt. And um, it's a lot of fun. I can imagine. I can really imagine that. <laughs> you know. It is. So, so thanks for sharing that. I mean, I'm smiling yeah. just uh, just imagining kind of people helping each other that way. Uh, but yeah, then again, it's I great. guess you, you don't you don't have to build a giant Instagram following. You can just have three or four other business owners like yourself meeting once a quarter. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's just a bitch session where you're just venting about stuff. Oh, <laughs> and, I see. And that's that's that can be super healthy. Mm -hmm. Therapeutic, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. So I got one final question for you that's not going to be related to what ended up being okay. the main body of our conversation, networking. Okay. 
thinking of the agency during the audience, a lot of the people in our audience uh, are in marketing agencies spe specifically. And you mentioned something like half an hour ago that really stuck with me is that, you know, the different types of agencies can learn from each other. You mentioned yeah. you're specifically, you know, in the software design space, UI, mm -hmm. UX, et cetera. There's some overlap, but here's a stab in the yep. dark. What mm -hmm. can marketing agencies learn from agencies in the software design space? Like, Ooh. what should they be looking at? Yeah, I, I would say number one is how, um, how are you doing billing? Um, are you doing productized services? Are you doing retainer based? Are you doing hourly building? Um, what's working for you? What's been profitable? What hasn't been profitable? You can learn a lot. Again, back to my point about, um, you know, different industries, learning mm -hmm. about how they bill, how they charge for their work, um, because um, you get different ideas for things, right? So the past few years, we've seen a bigger push um, towards um, uh, outcome-based billing or uh, um, retainer-based billing, right? Whereas 10, 15 years ago, everything was just hourly, right? And nowadays people yeah, yeah. are trying to create more productized services, for example. But you're an agency who's never done a productized service and you're going to start doing it. Well, where are you going to learn about success from it? From a book? Sure. Like you can get some ideas from a book, right? But you're never going to learn as much as talking with other people who have actually productized a service and launched it and tried it. Um, yeah. And so, and so the closer they are to you in the type of work you do in the digital space, the, the more it's easily going to translate to the type of work you're doing. So, so as you're growing and scaling your business and meeting your customers where they are at, um, having that network of other businesses to be able to lean on, to, to learn about different approaches, especially around billing, right? And then, um, not, then from billing goes to like account management and project management. How are you doing mm -hmm. delivery? Um, you know, years and years ago, at agencies we were at, we used to do all the hosting for our clients, right? We would do all the web hosting was done by us. And then okay. over the years, it's changed and everybody goes on AWS um, mostly or whatever the case may be. And so all those places lost that hosting thing. Well, because of ransomware and all these other <laughs> things that are happening, a lot of people are pulling stuff back on-prem. So. Uh -huh. Um, I know a few agencies that are offering that as a service to say, hey, you've got sensitive information. We will provide you locked down servers um, that are not on AWS and we will we'll charge you an extra fee and, and we'll get that hosting money back. Um, I never learned about that people were doing that till I was in a networking group with some other agency owners and they were mentioning they're doing this. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Um, that's okay. I haven't thought about that. I should look back at some of the services we used to provide and see if there's some value there. Cause what's old is new again, you know, especially when it comes to AI, right? We used to have, um, uh, many years ago, the clients would have lots of copywriters in their, in their businesses. And then they all got rid of the copywriters and just started hiring outside agencies and brought in copywriters. Well, now we've got AI coming in, which they're like, great. Mm -hmm. Um, now we've got this um, AI that's going to do all our copywriting. Oh, wait, it sounds like a two-year-old. This isn't going to work for us, but we've already gone down this road. Um, yeah. what can, what can agencies offer to help clients with their AI? Maybe they don't need a copywriter, but they need a copy editor. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe you yeah. are using AI for some of these things, but how would you like a real great set of eyes on that copy before it goes out instead of your people doing it? So mm -hmm. how are you learning these types of services and systems? Again, um, number one, you're going and you're talking to your current clients. What are the challenges and things that you're, you're dealing with? And number two, you're going out and you're meeting and talking with other people, either in the same industry or in an adjacent industry, right? So mm -hmm. I've got a networking group that I talk with that has a bunch of security professionals in it. Um, we don't provide um, security um, stuff at all. But we're in the same business and we have a lot of the same clients. Yeah, so, yeah, I hear you. So if I'm charging the client differently than the services place is, that might be weird for that client, right? Yeah. yeah. So if I can find some community with them and say, oh, you're charging them a monthly retainer? 
and I'm charging them hourly. Oh, we should, we should, we should talk about what worked, what would work best for this client and then for mm -hmm. our businesses and team up together and go to the client and present a new package. So yeah, again, lots of opportunities there. I, I can absolutely see that. Interesting how you touched upon copy. This mixed in my mind with what we were talking about before, uh, you know, in terms of thinking about problems. Here's a problem that I feel a lot of organizations might have right now. I don't need a copywriter. I don't need even need a copy editor, but I need somebody to build my uh, my brand bot, you know, my yeah. writer yeah. agent. I I've heard that it can be done, but I can't do it myself. Yep. Could somebody come in and, no. you know, train a, a chat GPT agent? We've got all this existing content. You'll have tons of data to work off of, but it needs to bring consistent mm -hmm. results. And like you said, not sound like a two-year-old, right? That yeah, would be such a huge right. problem <laughs> for somebody to solve right now. And I think that would be a huge, a killer service, to be honest. It would be a great service. But again, to, to that point, um, I can't just come in and, in the way that generative AI, at least right now, is working. It still would need to be trained for six months to a year. So that's a year to six month contract that you've got with this mm -hmm. client to help them build this brand yeah. brand bot over time because it needs to go out on training wheels and then it needs to go out and, and be in a fenced in area at a cul-de-sac. And, and then eventually yeah. you can let it out on the main road at some point, but it's going to take <laughs> time. I have people approach us all the time because we do custom software and we've done some um, LLM stuff. When I immediately, when the clients are like, yeah, I want, I'm interested in this. Great. It's a year long to start teaching the bot, uh, the the service um, on your stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah. oh, I thought it was like, um, you just plug it and go. Oh, no, 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 not, yeah. no, no. Like if you want to just plug in and use chat GPT, certainly can, but you know, you're probably going to open yourself up to some lawsuits and plagiarism and things like mm. that. So, yeah. um, yeah. So AI is not as plug and play as as um, YouTube videos and other things would like you to think when it comes to a real um, business like a manufacturing or a healthcare company or something like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can. So there's plug still and that play. consulting piece, yeah. right? Exactly. You can plug and play, but what comes out the other side if you don't put in the work? It sounds like everybody <laughs> else. And yeah, as I used to have a boss, uh, old boss that was really, really intelligent, would say, "That sounds like a solution to create a problem." <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's a nice one I'll, I'll be stealing that one Alrighty. <laughs> well um kurt darn it this was such a rich conversation i uh, can't wait to publish this one to put it out there and oh, i personally thank you. learned thank you for the thoughtful questions too it was a real pleasure thank you thank you very <laughs> much i don't know if you're aware but i only recently took over as host from Gray McKenzie for Agency I am Journey. Aware. I follow this podcast. It's, I love this. I love the the work you guys do, and I love the product. And uh, uh, I'm I'm just I'm super honored to be here. So thanks for having me on. Thank you, thank you, Kurt. So it means a lot to hear that from you. And now, of course, I would love the watchers and listeners to hear a little bit from you about where they can follow you. You know what you've got coming up. Great. Tell them where they should go. Oh, great. Well, so um, I am most active on LinkedIn. Obviously, I do a lot of LinkedIn stuff. So you can find me there, Kurt Schmidt with a K. Um, and uh, I host a um, a weekly podcast called Schmidt List, which is meant um, to inspire and educate entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. So um, mm -hmm. both the internal, internal innovator and the external innovator. Um, I have the little book of networking that's out. And then I have a new book coming out called The 101010 Blueprint. Um, if you mm -hmm. follow me on LinkedIn, you can learn more about that. But it's basically how to design your future according to your personal values uh, in uh, with strategic precision. So um, I'm very excited. I think it's the best thing I've ever produced. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to get it get it out the door. I've been working on it for three years. So uh, wow. and then, yeah, and then I'm um, like I mentioned, if you follow me on LinkedIn, um, I put out a lot of content for agencies, uh, agency owners and founders, and I work with them. Um, a number of agencies all across the world on helping them better operate and better uh, provide um, better client service. So, yeah, awesome, awesome, and definitely, you know, I'll be checking out the the books in more detail uh, myself. And I encourage all of you agency journey watchers and listeners to do so as well. Awesome. All right, so this will be a wrap for this episode of Agency Journey. Kurt, thank you again so, so much for coming on. A, a bombshell of an episode, really. And <laughs> yeah, 
to you all watchers and listeners, thank you for joining us here today. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, uh, follow Zen Pilot on YouTube as well, because the video uh, versions of this are coming out on there as well. Leave us, leave us a comment, send us an email and all of that good stuff. And I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Bye, everyone.